trap jaw ants. Just an utter beast of an ant species, possessing one of the fastest moving predatory appendages of any animal in nature. Indeed, a force to reckon with. The most painful bite or sting I've ever felt in all the years I've been keeping pet ants wasn't from a fire ant, nor an Asian bullet ant, but from a queen trap jaw ant. These ants get their name from their signature serrated mandibles, which can open greater than 180 degrees, between which exist little trigger hairs that, like a trigger in a bear trap, once touched, cause the mandibles to snap shut with tremendous force, instantly delivering a lethal blow or death lock upon any prey that might be unlucky enough to be a victim of its clutches. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce that I've got a new colony of these incredible ants, and you guys will love the epic terrarium home I will be building for them, so they can live comfortably as our newest ant army to join the channel. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, we're kicking off this new year with a bang. Once again, welcoming yet another ant colony to our new Antiverse in our new Ant Room 2.0. A couple weeks back, we welcomed our new colony of ant blood-sucking Dracula ants to the channel who live happily in an AC ant tower. And now this week, our world of ant kingdoms expands again with the welcoming of our new trap jaw ants. Now we've had trap jaw ants on the channel before an OG colony we had named the Jawbreakers. Anyone remember them? Sadly, during the pandemic, my ant collection in the old ant room had to be downsized and the colony had to be released. But two years later, I'm thrilled to welcome back to the channel this new colony of trap jaw ants, especially because we oh so loved our awesome Jawbreakers. I have no doubt in my mind, this new colony of trap jaws will rise to continue the Jawbreakers legacy. I can't wait to show you what I have planned for their future kingdom. But do keep on watching until the end, because I have a very important question I would like to ask you regarding these new and awesome trap jaw ants of ours. Plus, you won't believe what happened while I was constructing our trap jaws terrarium. Stay tuned for all that coming up. Behold, our new kingdom of trap jaw ants. There's still a young starting colony of about 50 or so workers. Somewhere in here is a queen, but with this species of trap jaw ant, the queen is sorta of hard to spot, as she's almost the same size and shape as the workers. I do know she's in here though, because the colony has been producing eggs, which they hide within the folds of this chewed up and dirtied paper towel that lines the inside of their container. Man, I wouldn't dare place my finger inside there. But what an incredible species of ant to join our growing antiverse, right guys? Alrighty, see family? It's time to create a new and much more suitable home for our trap jaw ants. And I have something truly special planned. This here is the future home of our trap jaw ants. It is actually a pre-loved ant terrarium, which formerly housed our blades of Midas, our now massive spiny ant colony, before they moved into their current giant setup. After moving them out, I decided to keep their old tank and continued to water it because over the course of its lifetime, while the Blades of Midas were residing in it, it had acquired a very rich diversity of soil microbiota and creatures. These soils were awesomely bioactive with isopods, springtails, worms, and other such things that created a soil ecosystem that would be a total waste to throw away because these soil creatures help turn ant poop and waste into usable fertilizer for plant life. With a little soil ecosystem going, I won't have to clean the terrarium at all, and it will just sort of self-cycle its nutrients and lead to an overall healthier and more vital terrarium for all its inhabitants, ants and all. This is why for this terrarium build, I wanted to show any of you ant keepers out there watching that you can totally upcycle pre-used terrarium medium so that your new terrariums can utilize that already established soil ecosystem you may have cultured, which can sometimes take months to establish from the start. Another thing that's great about having soil creatures like springtails already in here is that as we've already seen back when we were keeping our jawbreakers, the trap jaw ants love catching and hunting springtails as a source of food. So that would make feeding so much easier. Anyway, guys, let's turn this bland terrarium into a lush territory 
fit for a colony of trap jaw ants. First, I added more soil. The blades of Midas's old medium was heavy in rice husk to act as a building material for their nests, but our trap jaws are diggers constructing subterranean nests in soil. So it was important to give them a thick and rich layer of soil. Then I added our driftwood and then plants. And after two hours of work, this is what our new and improved terrarium looked like. AC family, behold, Aranyani's Bend, a forest terrestrial kingdom and future home to our trap jaw ants. Aryani's Bend is named after the Hindu goddess of forests, and I've designed it to mimic a forest terrestrial ecosystem. For plants, I've used Syngonium, green nerve plants, the red variety of nerve plants, and Pilia, which I find to be super cute. I also love this white path running through the lands, which will help the dark trap jaw ants pop once they've moved in. I've also placed a cool rock formation at the back corner there and a couple beautiful driftwood pieces like this one with a lot of nooks and crannies for the ants to explore. The driftwood also offers a lot of nesting opportunities as you can see with this deep and darkened hole here. Do you think they'll like it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's move in the ants. I placed the container inside Aranyani's bend, then carefully removed the lid. I then tipped the container to its side and the ants began to pour out into the territories. I then carefully removed the paper towel and placed the pieces onto the soil. And done. AC family, let's watch. The ants instantly began exploring their new territories, racing around in all directions, trying to figure out where they had just been transported to. The ants had no idea what to make of these strange lands, they instantly began to check out the driftwood and even found that deep hole we saw earlier. This first period is always the most confusing for the ants because they're suddenly in a new place with new smells. So it takes a while for them to figure out what their plan is as a colony. But eventually the collective ant intelligence kicks in and they all start to operate on the same page after this initial exploratory stage. Watching the trap giants explore every corner of the territories was so fun. There's just something I love about watching how the ants explore a bit, meet with each other for a split second, and continue to collect information about their new environment. Ants scurried across the soil floor. They treated the paper towel like a nest for now, as they hid exposed egg batches laying around. Oops, this young ant seemed injured, but it may survive. I find this species of trap giant to be quite hardy and an easy species to keep. Not to mention super interesting. They kind of look like aliens. Plus, what makes these ants easier to keep is that they can't really climb glass nor smooth surfaces, but they can catapult with their jaws if they ever feel threatened and want to leap out of their spot. More ants explored the driftwood, covered the rocks, followed the path, and overall continued to create a mental map of these new territories, which I felt they were going to love. I even caught a group of ants starting to dig a hole, which was a good sign. They were beginning to claim these territories theirs. As a housewarming gift, I placed in a freshly cut up roach on the white path. I wondered if they would completely pounce on it. I watched to see. An ant finally came along, discovered the roach, and began to have a taste of the roach carcass. Mmm, yum. But then it continued on with its business, not staying for the full feast. I guess the main priority for these ants right now was to construct a suitable nest for them to place the young and seek safety. The ants were clearly not too interested in food at the moment. That's cool. I decided to allow the ants to settle into Aranyani's bend for the next few hours and check up on them later in the night. When night came, I checked up on our trap giants to see how they were doing in their new home. To my delight, the ants were feasting on the roach now. How awesome! I could get a real good look at the workers now as they were feeding. They're truly such unique looking ants. And whoa, check out that one tearing at the guts. Those are some mean pair of mandibles. It eventually gave up on the guts and decided to tug on a leg instead. 
It was so interesting watching the ants feed with their mighty jaws wide open to make way for their smaller mouth parts to come forward and suck up the juicy roach guts. To me, the ants looked like a bunch of raptors feeding on a massive carcass. I looked towards the driftwood hole, and indeed, it did seem like the ants were entering and exiting from it. But the ants had made a more main home base here, at this location, under the driftwood. Now, although these trapjaw ants have such a notorious reputation for being ferocious little warriors, watching them feed so tenderly on this roach carcass made me see them as endearing. Do you guys agree? It was almost like these ants had that crazy duality, fierce and aggressive when they need to be, with their lethal facial weaponry and a sting that could kill, but at other times, gentle and tender when they weren't hunting or defending. And look, Aw, oh, love how they briefly check each other out when they meet before going back on with their business. Love these ants. Now at the start of the video, I mentioned I'd be needing your help. And it's this. What should we name our new colony of trap jaw ants? Should we call them the Jawbreakers 2.0? Or give them a new name? Leave your name suggestions in the comments and I'll choose my top 5 favorites for all of us to vote on in a future video. As I watch the ants feed, I spotted one worker working at the head of the roach. And watch this. Bam! Bam! She was using her trap jaws like a cleaver, chopping at the roach's flesh in attempts to detach it from the body. I mean, why wouldn't she? With jaws that shut at 230 kilometers an hour, with enormous forces, why not use it as a chopper? And bam! Whoa! Did you see that? She totally freed that head clean of the body. Now as I watched her handle the huge roach head, I wondered, no way is she going to try to carry that back to the nest on her own. Yup. Wow, what a beast. I watched in awe as she lugged the huge roach head back to the place the colony was nesting, where they would further work on it and also feed it to the larvae. Wasn't that just cool, AC family? Since the ants were no longer living in the old paper towel lining, I removed it. I was so grateful to have our new colony of trap jaw ants. And if this colony was as easy to keep as the jawbreakers, then I am certain this colony too will grow into a huge army, becoming an OG colony of this new ant room 2.0 some years down the road. What do you guys think of our new trap jaw ants here? This is truly the beauty of ant keeping. Being able to watch a colony live out their lives within a setup you've made for them with love and giving them all they need to live out their best lives. Our newest ant kingdom to join our Antiverse has a future under our care that is looking quite exciting. So guys, do remember to subscribe to the channel to keep updated on the progress of this new trap giant colony and hit the like button every single time, including now until the day we return to Aranyani's Bend, here in our ant room. Thank you all for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever. <laughs> hey, what's this? Wait a sec. No way! How awesome! <laughs>Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.